begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Madhouse, man. It's going to be a madhouse today. We're going to be doing something a little different here. Last three episodes, I've been covering the Crime Commission to report on the Pagans. Well, guess what? Now it's time to go over the Bowling Green study as far as police corruption goes. And you're going to see something that's a bit eye-opening. But first, I want to send out a shout out to the family, brothers, and all that of JoJo 1% out in mass. I've been following this case for about a year, and boy, was it a miscarriage of justice, big time. Uh, he's been undergoing an ordeal, uh, so is his family. Uh, in regards to uh, a shooting that occurred between the Sidewinders and the AOA. Now, I cannot even uh, try to claim I'm biased or not biased on this one. I, ca uh, I actually am. At least I admit it. But they were outnumbered, the AOA, by the Sidewinders. As many people know, they, you know what, that club, they're always causing crap. But anyway, they had brass knuckles and all that kind of stuff, and you'll see in the story coming up what it went down. JoJo protected his uncle. He protected his uh, fellow brothers. And he didn't just shoot all over the place, unlike that Brianna case in uh, Kentucky. But the judge in the case just granted him bail. And that is fantastic. And in her ruling or in her, you know, response to the motion, even said the Commonwealth case is weak, very weak. It was self-defense. What are you going to do when you bunch of morons are swinging hammers at your brass knuckles and everything else? You're outnumbered. And you see a family member getting hurt. The only way to stop something like that, because their intent is to severely hurt you. That's what the Second Amendment's for, baby. Right there, that's what the Second Amendment's for. To protect yourself and those that you love. So we're very happy, very excited for JoJo 1%. That is awesome freaking news. Now... I know I'm going to get the haters. Now, I understand our platforms worldwide has a lot of different supporters from a lot of different clubs. I know that. But hey, just like you guys, I have a right to support who I want. And that is my feelings on this. I've been following it for over a year. Close to a year, anyway. And the stuff that I've seen the Commonwealth put forward is just bogus. Nobody should be going through that. Nobody. I kind of can say that, you know, this self-defense is 100% in the right. And I'm just tickled to death to see the judge come out and say that. I'm actually going to read the story for you guys. I always hate when somebody dies. I really do. But when you come at another man in force, outnumbering him, what other choice do you have as a man than to do what you need to do to survive something like that? Now that is the problem that I always see with one particular club. They're always moving into everybody else's area. Everybody says, well, we got to stop this. We got to stop that. Well, maybe... Just maybe, that one club might want to stay out of other people's business, man. Stay out of their backyards. You know, and I know I'm going to piss off a lot of their supporters. You know, everybody knows who I'm talking about. 
It always seems that's the problem. And hey, I'm independent on this deal, but that's just my thoughts. I've seen it. And I think that's what gets me aggravated when people say, hey, we just got to get along. Because they don't look at the background of the situation that somebody's going through. If you really look, really look at the areas that are having the problems, it has to do with a couple particular clubs moving into somebody else's historically, you know, designated area, if you will, where they started out. So, yeah, there's going to be problems. Like I said, that's like somebody trying to come into your backyard or in your house uninvited. Sad state of affairs, man. Sad state of affairs. Uh, but what would you do? Would you just sit there and let somebody come at you with brass knuckles or knives or a hammer? Hell no, if you got, like me, I got a 38 on me at all times. I had somebody coming at me like, Dad, I'm putting one between your eyes. And I don't care. No, my life's first. And if the cops want to arrest, go for it. Fight it in court. But this guy is 1,000%. 1,000% stand up. These are the type of men that make the club they stand tall they stand strong no matter what they're facing they spill blood with their brothers they cry with their brothers that's the type of guy that brotherhood you know is all about not this fake ass shit you see all over the internet hey brother hey brother you know what you look at them kind of guys especially when you they use that when they don't know your name. Me, I'll always use Homer or what's up, bud. I'll never use that word. But you got these people thrown around that word. Will they stand behind you? Will they risk their freedom for you? I very much doubt it. Very much doubt it. This is an example of of how far a true brother will go. Outnumbered. Everybody attacking. Then standing strong in the face of that attack. Doing what they gotta do. To protect themselves and protect their patch. Now. Again I'm biased. I admit it. But. This one club's been in the news all the damn time. Going all the way back to freaking uh, when they started off, they've always been schlucks. And that's just my personal opinion based on what I've seen in the news. So maybe, just maybe, they might want to stay out of the area. Or stand in their corner. I don't know what to tell you. But what I do know is this was a perfect example. And I'm so, uh, you know, happy for the family that the bail's been granted. Because those that followed it knew what happened. They knew this first degree homicide charge was BS from the beginning. From the very, very beginning. Justice, hopefully, will be served by the charges being dismissed altogether. You cannot start charging citizens of this country, and I'm not only talking about bikers. You got Kyle, who's uh, fighting for his freedom right now from the Kenosha stuff. But you cannot go and take away Americans' right to protect themselves. I don't care if it was a gun used, I don't care if it was a knife used, whatever needs to be used to protect yourselves, the government can't take that away from you. We already see what's going on in this country right now. The cops ain't going to protect you. 
They're not. You got these morons, these freaking, uh, what is it, BLM and all them, going into the, the suburbs now to make their stupid point. Cops can't go in there and help everybody know that this kind of situations were made for your Second Amendment. I suggest you use them. But what's worse is, you got Leo intentionally targeting bikers from clubs. That's horse shit. You would think they have a lot more problems going on now than the profile bikers or to get into it with bikers. Hell, like I've said, many bikers have been standing on the front lines with them. Me, personally, I don't believe in breaking bread with them. You know, I had one guy say, well, you go back and forth. Like, you know what? It depends on the situation. Do you comprehend? Does hooked on phonics work for you? Just because I won't break bread with them or have a beer with them because I know not to cross the line doesn't mean when I look at a situation and say, hmm, they were getting fired at, so they're going to return fire. And that's that case down in Kentucky. See, that's the problem with people that don't listen to the whole thing and they don't put it in perspective. They got these S9 ideals at that point. Oh, gotcha. You haven't got shit. I'm an open book. How about you? That goes out to the one that commented. But going back, and I'm going to be reading this report. You know what? We'll do a couple pages at a time. And I also got a report so you can see how the government goes after MCs. You'll see that. It's a study out of California. And then there's this study on bad cops out of Bowling Green. And then there's an article about why a lot of corrupt cops don't go to jail. Sure. We go with the wall of, you know, Corey Graff's wall of shame. I show you the type of stuff. Most of the time I don't follow up on it. But I can guarantee you some of those that I do cover never get any jail time. But God forbid a guy is sitting here protecting a family member protecting the club he's in because they are outnumbered. Now they want to charge him with first degree murder? Are you serious? Even the judge sees through this crap. And that's what it is, is crap. Maybe these little Leos should be focusing on these freaking uh, left wing terrorists instead of American workers. Because that's what a lot of these guys do. Hard workers. Even in the commission report that I've been reading on the pagans, they even said, not everybody's involved. So, that's pretty much my opening. Uh, I'm going to go to that story why it is fresh. That way you guys can see some of my points. Now, others might not see it my way. Okay, let's we can debate it. Just make sure you bring your facts before you try to d debate me on this kind of subject. Don't try to use one article with me. Because I'll jackhammer your ass because I'll bring a whole bunch more to the debate. When I debate, I always make sure I have my sp uh, sources. That's why when you see people coming on the show and try to debate me, they're like, because I'll hit you every which way but loose. I don't come unprepared for a debate. So, let's get into the story. And again, you know, full disclosure, everybody knows who I support. Everybody knows if, uh, you know, I'm supporting this one, I look at the other ones like, you know, they're schlucks. So, at least you guys can give me that of being honest and straightforward. A lot of people won't do that kind of stuff. They'll try to beat around the bush. 
That's not me. I don't beat around the bush. Screw that crap. So, anyway, let's get to that story, shall we? Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Most unbiased news. Now I get it. It's hypocritical. But on this one, at least I'm honest and uh, straightforward with you on it. Uh, defendant accused of Rochelle uh, shooting death gets bail. This by George Brennan out of the, looks like the MB Times. The Taunton man accused in the shooting death of Eric Bushell at a Fall River biker bar has been granted bail by the judge in the case. Rochelle, an Oak Bluffs firefighter, a member of the Sidewinders Motorcycle Club, was killed a year ago. Man, had to be a firefighter. What are you going to join them slugs for? Uh, anyway, Joseph Jojo Noe was granted $50,000 cash bail with a GPS monitoring after his defense attorney, Rob Galiba, uh, I'll just call him Rob, uh, successfully argued that the prosecution charge of first-degree murder fails to show premeditation. He's arguing that No acted in defense of his uncle, who was badly beaten, like I just said, badly beaten, in the chaotic scene outside JC's Cafe, when members of the Sidewinders and Outlaws, two rival motorcycle gangs clashed. That's their word, not mine. So, here JoJo is, seeing his uncle getting beat down. You, what, are you just going to stand there and let a family member get beat down? In her decision, this is what I was talking about. Judge Rene Dupius states that the video evidence in the case shows a chaotic scene with members of the outlaws outnumbered. Underline that, outnumbered by the Sidewinders, who were armed with brass knuckles, cylindrical objects, and knives. She further says... No showed some restraint before pulling the trigger five times. Quote, when a woman appeared to be pleading for calm, one of the sidewinders swung a hammer at her face. That must be taking balls to swing a hammer at a woman's face. No took out his firearm and pointed it toward the ground. The ground. That doesn't sound like it was intentional. He was trying to defuse the situation with the woman. When he noticed his uncle getting beaten, he fired the gun. That was protecting him. He could have died unless he did that. Based on the evidence provided during a two-day hearing, the judge found that there is reason to believe that the prosecution will have a difficult time proving first degree murder. That's what they charged him with, first degree murder. First degree murder is premeditated. This wasn't premeditated. The Commonwealth offered no evidence of previous specific disputes or particular motive for the incident which would suggest that the incident was planned by no. No, no other incident but this. Guys pulling up on their bikes, next thing you know, boom. They're outnumbered, they got freaking brass knuckles coming at them, they got hammers. And you don't think people are going to start firing off some shots? Again, that's what the Second Amendment's there for. <laughs> for that reason, she wrote, 
No should be granted bail. Quote, the facts of this case call into serious question. Again, the strength of the Commonwealth's case. Given the lack of evidence tending to support the Commonwealth's ability to prove that the defendant did not act in proper defense of another. With jury trials put on hold because of COVID-19, she wrote that it's unclear when no case will go to trial. She wrote, quote, He could be incarcerated for several years on charges for which he may very well eventually be acquitted. I don't know, man. You know, hooked on phonics might not have worked for me here, but I think the judge is trying to tell the prosecution you got no case. Maybe you should dismiss the charges. If the judge is telling you this, you got nothing. You got absolutely zilch. Ron told the Times a family member is in the process of getting money together to post bail. Quote, we are thankful for the judge's decision on bail and we completely agree that he should have received bail. We are looking forward to proceeding ahead with the defense of another. A spokesman for the Bristol County DA, Thomas Quinn III, could not be immediately reached for comment. Of course they're not going to comment. You know why? They just got their asses tore up by a judge. So, you guys let me know what you think. Of course, I got my biases. So take me out of the picture here. Think for yourself. Do the facts support this? And what would you do in this kind of situation? You see a family member getting beaten down. You see somebody uh, swing a freaking baseball bat at a chick. What the hell is that, by the way? You're going to swing a bat at a chick? I don't get it. Don't get it at all. Again, let me know in the comments section. Now, before I read the studies, I'm going to go over this article. How criminal cops av often avoid jail. Think about that. How criminal cops often avoid jail. New Jersey officers accused of violent sexual misconduct and more have walked free in deals that dodge a tough sentencing law. Now here JoJo was accused of first degree murder and everybody knows that's BS. But they're holding him. Why? Because he's a member of a club? But you got cops accused of violence, which we see every day on Corey Grass Wall of Shame. Sexual misconduct? My God. And they walk free. ProPublica is, a, and this is where it's at here, is a nonprofit newsroom that investigates the abuses of power. Go over and check this out. It sounds like a good thing here. When New Jersey lawmakers sought advice about police accountability, one of the power players they turned to was Sean Levine, a police union president or leader. Levine testified before state senators at a July hearing where he questioned whether civilians are qualified to serve on police oversight boards and suggested that chokeholds might sometimes be warranted. He also argued against releasing the names of officers who have been disciplined. <laughs> really? But when you arrest somebody, they're all over the friggin' newspaper, baby. But it's different with them, right? It's a public shame to their families. Well, what, there's no two systems uh, justice here. No two tiers. So if you put somebody in a newspaper that's already been arrested, that ain't shaming their families in public? Executive Director of the New Jersey Fraternal Order of Police Labor Council. Well, I don't see the value in that, and I don't think there is one. 
Okay, so stop all the practices. So if you don't want those that are charged for crimes or disciplined in the newspaper, take everybody else out of it too. Two wee street here. Levine's own history uh, illustrates something else. A state law enacted more than a decade ago to jail criminal officers uh, and other public officials who's abused their authority hasn't worked as intended. Levine is one of dozens of New uh, Jersey officers who have been criminally charged with official misconduct but avoided the jail time called for under the law. <laughs> oh, the hypocrite. An investigation by the Ashbury Park Press and ProPublica has found Levine was indicted in 2014 when he worked as a Mercer County Sheriff's Officer. The indictment accused him of using pepper spray on a handcuffed woman. Filing a false report about the encounter and encouraging other officers to fake the reports too. Good guy, huh? So he can use his, uh, uh, you know, abuse his power with some pepper spray on a handcuff women. It's about as bad as somebody trying to go after one with a bat. The charges included three counts of second degree official misconduct, which is reserved for public employees who are accused of criminally misusing their position. A conviction on each charge should come with mandatory jail time. I agree. Up to five years with no parole in this case, according to the state law. But he received no jail time, no probation, no criminal record in exchange for only resigning from the force. That's it. In October of 2015, he entered a pretrial intervention program, ordinary reserved for low-level crimes. It wiped the charges from his record. So he can talk why about how the law should be... Oh my God. Oh, the hypocrisy, man. Plea deals are common in criminal court, but in 2007, a sentencing law was passed and attorney general guidelines were enacted to make such deals the exception for official misconduct crimes. Instead, they have become the norm. All told, from 2013 through 2017, prosecutors charge law enforcement officers with official misconduct at least 118 times. Think about that. 118 times times and these are the ones that take the oath of office that say they're going to protect and defend the constitution less than one third of them only one third receive jail time the charges were not based on minor complaints of tardiness or failing to maintain one's uniform more than a dozen officers were accused of serious acts of violence like pistol whipping a suspect or attempted murder. Among the sexual misconduct charges was one in which an officer allegedly used his badge and a gun to coerce a woman into having sex. Officers were charged with smuggling drugs, stealing and using cocaine, tipping off drug dealers, other cases alleged bribery, cover-ups, lying, intimidation, and more. These are law enforcement officers. Well, if the sentencing structure is designed to deter conduct we find particularly re re uh, reprehensible, and it all ends up being lip service, which most of the time it does, that is outrageous. That's a fraud, said Jennifer Bojean, an attorney who has filed misconduct lawsuits against police departments in New Jersey. Compared with other types of public employees, law enforcement officers charged with official misconduct go to jail less often. Prosecutors and judges have consistently downgraded charges in ways that fail to carry out the law that calls for putting public servants convicted of official misconduct in jail. 
my God, it sounds like Chicago, man. Everybody's charged. The next thing you know, they walk away, and then they're back in office. <laughs> so think about this. This is at ProPublica.org. Now, the reason why I went over this one first is because I'm going to go into the Bowling Green study. This talks about how many cops are charged and all that good stuff. And then you to look at it from the angle, hey, wait a second, bikers, they don't do nothing compared to these cops. Let's go in the first couple pages. And the abstract of the report, now, this is a pr police integrity loss, a study of law enforcement officers arrested. Again, this is the Bowling Green University one. Now, the abstract of this there are no comprehensive statistics available on problems with police integrity. And no government entity collects data on all criminal arrests of law enforcement officers in the United States. Why not? The public pays taxes in order for that police department to function. So why shouldn't we know what's going on? Police crimes are those crimes committed by sworn law enforcement officers with the general uh, powers of arrest. These crimes can occur while the officer is either on or off duty and include in offenses committed by officers employed by state and local law enforcement agency. This study provides a wealth of data on the phenomena that relates directly to police integrity. Data that previously did not exist in a usable format. Now this is a 672 page report. This study went after everything to get the numbers. Now their first goal of the study is to determine the nature and extent of police crime in the United States the objective for this goal is to determine the incident and prevalence of officers arrested. A second goal is to determine what factors influence how an agency responds to arrest of its officers. Oh, that's a big one. We want to know. We want to know if that blue uh, wall is still up. Objectives for this goal are to determine whether certain factors influence agency response and employment outcomes. A. Severity of crimes for which officers are arrested. B. Level of urbanization for each employee and agency. Geographic location, length of service, age of officers, and the criminal case outcomes. And a final goal is to foster police integrity by exploring whether officers arrested correlate with other forms of police misconduct. Objectives for this goal are to determine whether arrested officers were also named as a civil depend, uh, defendant in any 42 USC 1983 federal court actions during their careers and to inform practitioners and policymakers of strategies that will better identify Problem officers and those at risk. So that's kind of uh, the overview of what they're doing. Now, since there ain't no federal agencies uh, keeping track of this, they use a Google News search resulting in the identification of 6,724 6, cases in which sworn law enforcement officers were arrested during the years of 2005 through 2011. These cases involved the arrest of 5,500 individuals that were sworn officers employed by 2,500 non-federal state and local uh, enforcement agencies located in uh, 1,205 counties and independent cities in all 50 states and the District of Columbia. The findings indicate that non-federal law enforcement officers were arrested nationwide during 2005-2007 and 
at a rate of 0 0.72 officers arrested per 1,000, and at a rate of 1.7 officers arrested per 100,000 population worldwide. Now, that's the first one. They got a full police crime data set, sex-related police crime, alcohol-related police, drug, violence, profit-motivated, employing a law enforcement agency of arrested officers. That, those results are through pages 76 through 177. So, starting next week, we're going to start at, uh, I don't know, part one or part two and go through this. But that's just an overview of this. Now, this study was done out of uh, the University of California, was it? No, the state of California. And here's their outline. Remember the last report we went over. That's now we're going to compare it to, uh, say, their side of the story. Evolution. Big Five update. The Hells Angels, Pagans, Outlaws, Banditos, Sons of Silence. Why they have the Outlaws, Sons of Silence, Banditos in the California report, I don't know. Then, oh, of course, associated crime groups, the white supremacy groups, prison gangs, and traditional organized crime. Their claim in criminal activity ranges from motorcycle thefts, prostitution, money laundering, gang violence, illegal weapons, narcotics. They go through the evolution in their starting, you know, the history of outlaw motorcycle gangs. The pissed off bastards of Bloomington appeared in California shortly after World War II. We all know that. They came to the national attention in 47 when they turned the American uh, Motorcycle Association sponsored hill climb into a week-long brawl. Really? Which one is that? <laughs> Later that same year, thousands of motorcycle enthusiasts attended a run in Riverside, which ended in rioting and destruction and two deaths. So basically, they're blaming everybody that you know went to that uh, event. Uh, and at uh, 48, the community of Riverside was again in inuated by motorcycles who turned a simple event into a riot. That's how they're coming to this study with them preconceived notions, and there's no facts in that right now. None. Then it says the 60s. Uh, th that that one percent AOA, uh, not AOA, but MA, a a AMA stuff. Uh, when they did the one percent stuff, then they go into the history about uh, when the clubs were formed. But they're coming t with this at this study from a wrong angle already. They say, today, outlaw motorcycle gangs are a sophisticated organization who utilize their affiliation with a motorcycle club as a conduit for criminal activity. The nature of their activity is generally con uh, <laughs> uh, conspiracy, and their goals are attained through use of violence and intimidation because of their expertise in sophisticated weaponry and their international intelligent networks. Outlaw motorcycle gangs pose a formidable threat to society in general and specifically law enforcement. Just off the analysts of uh, the Bowling Green study, kind of looks like law enforcement are the ones that uh, are a threat to society, doesn't it? Then they go into the different clubs, how they started, and all that stuff. Uh, again, we'll start uh, this project and Monday. I just wanted to uh, kind of give you an overview. Now, over in Australia, there's also a report. But it came out where people didn't like uh, how it came out, I have to say. Outlaw motorcycle gangs are identified in Australia and internationally as being heavily involved in organized crime and or as being criminal organizations. However... However, 
Academic studies have shown that OMCG members are involved in organized crime to varying extents. This differs between clubs across jurisdictions to date. Australian studies of OMCGs are rare despite this. Australian governments target OMCGs as key players in organized crime. This study contributes to the existing literature by analyzing uh, OMCGs criminally in one uh, Australian jurisdiction, Queensland. It draws on rich qualitative data to determine whether and to what extent OMCGs are involved in serious crime, organized crime, and or operating as criminal organizations. The study finds, the study finds that Queensland's OMCG members participate in serious crime at a higher weight rate than general public, oh well, of course. But that there are few examples, few examples of organized crime. There is little to no evidence of OMCGs acting as criminal invest uh, organizations. And this was by Mark Losh and Zoe Staines, an analyst of outlaw motorcycle gang crime. Are bikers organized criminals? At least this study out of Queensland says no. It says there is little to no evidence of OMCGs acting as a criminal organization. Now, the reason why, again, I'm going over all these studies is because you get sick and tired. So, you know what? Let me go to my final thoughts on this. Okay, yeah, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel with the different uh, terms of services coming out. We could get labeled adult only where you have to be signed in and all that good stuff. So make sure you share the video. That helps us out the most. Com you know, donations would be cool. Yeah, you know, all the super chats and stuff. Uh, but what really helps us is if you share our content on your platforms. Now... So I was starting to say the reason why I am doing these studies is you get sick and tired of hearing that all clubs, especially the one percenter ones, are criminal organizations. That does not bear any fruit. They can't back that up. Even in the New Jersey Crime Commission report that I read over the past three segments doesn't show that. They name some incidences of crime, but they have no backup. Some of those crimes can be explained away like the one in the bar. You don't go up and uh, you know harass a woman without going to get your head knocked off. And no, clubs don't go around extorting bar. They think it's the 70s. It may be been like that back then, but it's not like that. Now there's too much damn technology and too many people that are running them off at the mouth. You know, that's, the, you know, that's one thing about the educational system, man. They have taught our kids to go freaking tattletale, let me tell you. People don't keep their mouth shut anymore, so you think... That club members are going to actually risk their freedom knowing that this dude is probably going to, you know, go talk to the cops. That makes no sense to me. And you even in your report, while talking about the pagans, were saying that it's only a few individuals. No, what you're trying to do, as all in law enforcement agencies do, are trying to pad their budget. Not one study have I seen done, and I hope it's going to be done, is about law enforcement motorcycle clubs. We don't see a lot of news on that, and we know it happens. 
But it only seems like the media wants to push their narratives for clicks for their advertisements. They don't want to put facts out. They hardly ever try to get the club's side without editing everything out. They can sit there 40 minutes, talk to a damn reporter, and they only get 30 seconds. Sound bites. That's it. And that's to sway the general public. Their opinion. You love cops then because you're getting a scoop. Until you turn around and say, ah, you know what, this is more better of a story. And then you turn on them. So I don't know why the hell they keep on uh, giving you info. But this Bowling Green study shows you there are a lot of cops that are bad. But as the other story says, a lot of them never do time. It makes you wonder how many of the stories we did on the wall of shame where they were actually convicted, put behind bars without making them sweetheart deals. It's funny if you got a badge and a gun, you can make a sweetheart deal. But if you're a regular Joe Schmo, they don't want to cut you anything. No, they want to charge you with first degree murder for protecting yourself and your family. That's what they want to do if you're a club member. Well, hell, you know, he's wearing a patch. That's a criminal organization, according to the district attorney. So they don't get the same rights as a United States citizen to protect themselves. Only if they got a badge and a gun can they get the sweetheart deals and, you know, the presumption of innocence. Or is it that your new Jack prosecutors are just looking to get a feather in their cap? And they're doing it off the backs of legitimate, hardworking people. This subject kind of cuts close to me, man. It really does. You know, it just depends if you have the damn money to get a good lawyer to get you out of stuff. That's what it sounds like. That's the justice in this country. Justice is supposed to be blind. My ass. Our whole justice system is hypocritical at best. Corrupt at worst. Unless you have money, you never get a fair trial in this country. Judges are nothing but political hacks. They don't stick to the letter of the law. They make decisions based on their opinion instead of facts. Which is very discouraging. So, where do we go from here? Are we going to start educating ourselves on some of these studies and say, Hey, wait a second, man. This don't sound right. We need change. That guy, he's talking in front of a commission. He's already been a convicted freaking idiot. But he got a sweetheart deal. But he's saying that cops' faces shouldn't be in the newspaper because that's public shaming of the family. And like I said before, well, wait a second. If I get busted, I'm in a newspaper. Ain't that uh, public shame in my family? I hate the different standards that are in this country right now. Just today, for example, Durham, he's investigating that Clinton Foundation. Well, it's about time anybody who has any brains that uh, took hooked on phonics as a course knows that, hey, wait a second, they're giving you two, three hundred thousand dollars in donations while you're Secretary of State. Yeah, you want something in return for that money. But it's a sad state of affairs that the general public don't think logical anymore. They're like led around like sheeple. It's disgusting. So I think that's uh, my viewpoint on a lot of this stuff today. Again, I'm sorry. I was a little biased. Not a little, but I was biased. But hopefully you appreciate the honesty in uh, letting you know that. But even if I wasn't biased to who was involved, 
I would look, I still sit back and if that happened with different clubs, I would say that was justifiable 100%. If you're outnumbered, weapons are all over the damn place and you see somebody about to get hit, a woman, and then you see a, a family member getting beat down, yes, I'm going to pull right away. Actually, if I see more than two guys approach me, I'm pulling. The, the, I guess that's Chicago, but, uh, you know, a lot of people think that way here. But pull that sucker and go. So, with that, hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. Don't forget to go all over to Hollywood and China Dow's uh, channel. We have some in-deep conversations over there, man. In-depth, man. It's a really good time. Talk about some freaky stuff. Uh, all kinds of subjects, man. It's not a biker channel. It's uh, kind of a little different. But uh, go over there and subscribe. Spotify and all that. Both shows are over there. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. And share it. Man, them new terms, terms of uh, service is brutal, baby. So with that, I'll catch you guys later. You guys all have a good weekend. All that good stuff. I'll talk to you.